Do you find forking a repo really easy, but keeping it up to date is trickier? I'm gonna show you how straightforward it is to keep your forked version up to date with the original repository. Let's get started. Here's my GitHub profile. If you wanna drop me a follow and see what I'm up to on GitHub, then do that. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and hit subscribe below if you haven't already so you get notified when future videos come out. And it's free, it won't cost you anything. So let me go find a repo. So I've got this community repository that myself and the community are working on. We chat about it and collaborate on the Discord. We do have a React front end for the bot, which started recently. And we're going to also do a mobile app as well. So if you want to get involved, head over to our Discord channel. The link is below in the description and we can continue the discussion there. So what you do, which probably most of you know, is you hit fork. And you probably only have one option where it forks to. And if you do, it'll automatically fork it to your area. But because I've got loads of organization, it gives me the option. I'm just going to select my account. So now I've forked it. And it's forking it to my account out of the community organization that we have. The next thing you do is you clone it. So you click on clone, copy the SSH or the HTTPS link. You type git clone, paste the URL. And I want to give it a name so it doesn't clash with the original repo that I've got. So it's going to clone it. It's going to ask for my password because I have a password on my SSH keys. If I get it right. Wow. Third time lucky. Let's have a look. Now that I've cloned the project, I can go into that directory. It was Eddie bot fork. As you can see, it's already in the develop branch. This is because this is a default branch set by the source repository. I highly suggest you do not make changes to this branch. This is the branch that you keep up to date with the source repository. So if you want to make changes, you do something like this, git checkout minus B and good practice. I've seen people use is they type their username, then they type the issue number if there's an issue created. And by doing git checkout minus B, it will actually create the branch that I name I gave it, Eddie Jowd issue 123. I can make all my changes. I can then do a commit. I can then do a push and create a pull request. Let me quickly show you that. Then I'll show you how to keep your forked repository up to date with the source repo. So it's really important when you make changes to your branch, you create a pull request on the original repository, that once it's merged, you need to bring those changes back in because you don't want to bring your branch into the default branch, which in this case is developed. You need to push up to your repo, create a pull request from your repo to theirs, and then once it gets merged in in, the, in their repo, the source repo, you need to bring it back down to your repo into the default branch. So you're kind of doing this, this circle and that's the way all your changes in the fork should go. So let's try that. So if I open VS Code, you'll all recognize this. So let me add a Discord link so if people want to join the Discord, they can. Join our Discord community here and then I'll put a link in. So I'm just going to copy our Discord link and add it to the readme at the bottom here. Let's just check our changes. Git status, the readme has been updated. If we did a git diff, we can see what's been changed. And then we can do a git commit minus M. And if you're following conventional change logs, you can say something like docs, socials, Discord link added to readme. And there's no issue number, but usually you'd put an issue number at the end. If I commit that and then I'm going to push that up to my forked version of the repo. So I've created this branch in my forked version. As you can see, this is the forked version. If I go to the original source repo, it will automatically notify me that there's a pull request. So I want to go from my branch in my repository to develop branch in the source repository. And it shows you the changes below. I want to hit create pull request and the pull request has been created. And then once it's reviewed by the project maintainers and gets merged in, we need to bring that back down into our repository. We'll just wait for the CI to build this. So now it's built successfully, the project maintainer will be able to merge it. And as I'm one of the maintainers in this project, I'm just gonna merge it. And I'm gonna delete the branch because it's no longer needed. And so now, if I go back to develop in my fork, I don't have those changes. So I need to bring those changes down. And the way you do that is you type git remote minus V, and it says that I'm only looking at the remote, which is my forked version. So what I need to do is go to the original repository and get the URL of that. And I need to add it as an upstream. So I need to go git remote add upstream and paste in that link. And so now if I type git remote minus V, so now I've got two remotes, 
I could pull from, I could fetch or pull from the origin, but that's my fork. Nothing has changed. I haven't got those changes. So I need to get the changes in my local repository from the source repository. And then I can push that to my fork. What you do next is fetch the upstream. Again, it's going to go ask for my SSH key. You probably won't have this. And so now I've brought down everything, not into my local working directory, but into my Git area, I've brought everything that is in the upstream. You can see these branches develop, which is what I want. I've got this other br branch from earlier on that's in the source repository and master. So what now, if you notice, if I do a git log again, nothing has changed still because I need to merge it in. So next I would say git merge upstream develop. And so now you can see that that file has changed in my develop branch. And if I say git log, this is, this is the commit that we created a few minutes ago, which we created a pull request into the source repository, which I've now brought down into mine. So if I refresh my fork, you will see the latest commit is four hours ago, not now. So I need to push that to my, to my fork, which in this case is origin. And now if I refresh this page, it says four minutes ago. That's how you keep your forked version up to date. Any questions, suggestions, improvements, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed that video, let me know by giving me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe below. It really supports the channel and it's free. It doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps me grow my channel and grow the community. Don't forget to head over to our Discord channel and let's continue the conversation there.